There are two types of optical telescopes. We have refracting telescopes, which use lenses, and reflecting telescopes, which use mirrors. But before we go on talking about either kind, we must realize that the only way they work is by the interaction of the incoming light with the lenses and the mirrors in these telescopes. And this interaction is called optics. It is through the optics of a telescope that it can gather light and form images for us to see. Now, there are various types of lenses that should already be generally familiar to us. Contact lenses to help our eyes see more clearly if needed, camera lenses to take impressive photographs, and concave or convex lenses to experiment with optics. These are the lenses that astronomers use in refracting telescopes. So let's take a look inside the body of a refracting telescope to see how it interacts with incoming light. As light enters the tube of a refractor, it is bent by the primary or objective lens, causing it to converge at a particular point before fanning out again as it travels to the ocular lens, where you'll put your eye. The point where the light rays converge together is the focal point of the telescope. This is where an image forms. The distance between the primary lens and the focal point of a telescope is called the objective focal length, and the distance from the focal point to the ocular lens is called the eyepiece focal length. And remember, the eyepiece is like a little magnifying glass. The shorter the focal length of the eyepiece, the higher its magnification will be. Magnification is actually determined by dividing the focal length of the objective lens by the focal length of the eyepiece, which is usually labeled on the eyepiece itself. So if you had a telescope with an objective lens of 1,400 millimeters, attaching a 35 millimeter eyepiece will give you a magnification of 40 but attaching a 7mm eyepiece will increase the magnification by 200 times. Here are some examples of refracting telescopes. Notice the shape of a refracting telescope is generally a long, thin tube, and the bigger the primary lens, the longer the tube. Now remember, as the primary lens diameter increases, its focal length also increases, resulting in a focal point that is further and further away from the primary lens. This is necessary to allow for the light to travel down the length of the tube until it converges at the focal point. The largest refracting telescope constructed that still stands today is the Yerkes Telescope in Williams Bay, Wisconsin, just about 85 miles north of Chicago, Illinois. With an objective lens of 1.02 meters, or 102 centimeters, it was operated by the University of Chicago Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics from its founding in 1897 until it was retired from active scientific research and ownership of the Yerkes Telescope was transferred to the Yerkes Future Foundation in May of 2020. Here we see an image of the Yerkes Observatory staff with a very special guest in May of 1921, which happened to be the very same year that he worked on the photoelectric effect that earned him his Nobel Prize. And at one point in time, there existed an even bigger refracting telescope than the Yerkes. The Paris Universal Exhibition of 1900 displayed a refractor with a primary lens of diameter 1.25 meters, or 125 centimeters, but it was never used for astronomy. It was eventually dismantled and used for scrap metal after the convention was over and no serious buyer for the telescope had been found. Its lenses are in storage today at the Paris Observatory. Now some of the problems with refracting telescopes comes down to their actual functionality. In order for astronomers to get brighter and more high resolution images from refractors, they need lenses that are as big as can be. But as the lens diameter is increased, so is the focal length of the telescope, which implies longer and longer telescope bodies. The bigger the lens, the heavier it will be. Not only will the lens itself be heavier, but the entire body of the telescope will be so much bigger and so much heavier that it would require quite a bit of support. Look at the size of this large blank of glass that's about to be converted into a lens. Now, with all that to consider, we also need to remember that the quality of glass isn't always perfect. Inclusions and imperfections will always affect the quality of the images produced. But the most prominent problem with refracting telescopes is a certain little thing called chromatic aberration. As white light comes through the objective lens of the telescope, its different colors bend at different angles, converging into separate images at different focal points. So we end up seeing these colorful fringes around the edges of the objects that are being observed and photographed. Here, for example, we see green fringes that can be seen towards the top of this image of a pendant, while the bottom shows purple fringes. 
This side-by-side -side comparison shows a photograph of two cheetahs, but only one side of the image has been corrected for the chromatic aberration that was originally there. In this last example, we can see quite a bit of chromatic aberration in this observation of the moon. So for these various reasons, particularly because of chromatic aberration, professional astronomers do not use refractors.